Welcome to the WP Builds Podcast, bringing you the latest news from the WordPress community. Now, welcome your hosts, David Wormsley and Nathan Wrigley. Hello there and welcome to the WP Builds Podcast once again. This is episode number 236, entitled N is for Numbers. It was published on Thursday, the 1st of July, 2021. My name's Nathan Wrigley, and just before we start the show, a few bits of housekeeping, as we usually do. If you're interested in the podcast and you would like to find out more about the content that we create, the best way to do that is to go to our website, wpbuilds.com, but perhaps an even better way is to go to wpbuilds.com forward slash subscribe. If you head to that page, you will find a bunch of ways that you can keep in touch with all that we produce. For example, there's a couple of newsletters that you can sign up to there. I'd encourage you to do that. Also, there's links to our Facebook page, Twitter channel and YouTube channel. So WP builds.com forward slash subscribe. Speaking of Facebook, I'm trying out an experiment. I've downloaded and installed a instance of Mastodon, which is a bit of a Twitter clone, an open source Twitter clone. And over the next few weeks, you'll probably hear me droning on about it. You can find it at a rather unusual URL. It's wpbuilds.social. Once more, wpbuilds.social. And if you would like to join the conversation over there, currently there's about 38 members and we're just kicking things off. But if you don't really wish to use Facebook, Facebook and you don't wish to use Twitter, this is a much more private self-hosted version. So final time, wpbuilds.social. Another page to mention is our deals page. I keep saying it's a bit like Black Friday, but every day of the week, and that's because it is. If you go to that page, you'll find a bunch of coupon codes for links, all to do with products and services in the WordPress space. So if you fancy buying something this week, if you're in the market for a plugin or a theme or a bit of hosting, check out that page. You never know. Bookmark it, wpbuilds.com forward slash deals. And last, but by no means least, if you would like to get your product or service, if you're a product or service founder or owner, then we've got a great deal for you. WPBuilds.com forward slash advertise would be a great way to hit a WordPress specific audience. Everybody that listens to this podcast has some interest in WordPress, just like you. And so if you would like your product or service to go in front of them, then WPBuilds.com forward slash advertise is the page for you to visit. One company that's done that is AB Split Test. Do you want to set up your AB Split Tests in record time? The new AB Split Test plugin for WordPress will have you up and running in a couple of minutes. Use your existing pages and test anything with anything else. Buttons, images, headers, rows, anything. And the best part is it works with Elementor, Beaver Builder and the WordPress Block Editor. You can check it out and get a free demo at absplittest.com. Okay, today's podcast episode 236, N is for numbers. Now, this genuinely is a really interesting episode. It's not really like any we've done before because we just went out and scoured the internet for any fact which was to do with WordPress. How many installs does it have? Which is the most popular plugin? How many WordCamps are there? How many themes are there? And there's absolutely boatloads of content in here. It's quite a random episode. It's a bit of a miscellany, but it's really interesting. There's tons to talk about. If you enjoyed it and you would like to make some commentary about it, head over to wpbuilds.com, search for episode number 236, or perhaps go to wpbuilds.com forward slash Facebook, and you can make a comment over there. And don't forget our new Mastodon instance, wpbuilds.social. Please join up over there and let us know what you thought about this episode. I hope that you enjoy it. Hello, it's another A to Z of WordPress, the series where we attempt to cover all the major aspects of building and maintaining sites with WordPress. Today is N for numbers. And when we say numbers, we are really talking about statistics. We've got SEO for S, so we've used that one up. Oh, I just thought we were going to list loads of numbers. I thought we were just going to go like four, 100, yeah. three, 72. No, that's not the intention. No, no. Do you have a favorite number? Oh, uh, I don't think I do. Is that normal? Do people normally have a favorite number? I don't number? know. Apparently they do. I don't have one either. Well, maybe, yeah, 20, 
23 seems to be my favorite. There was a film about that, and it's also my birth date, so I don't know. But why? Anyway. Why 23? What's superior about that one? I don't know. Though. There's a whole, there is a movie called 23, I think, oh. which talks about the magic of the number 23, and because it's my birth date, so it's going to be mine now. That's okay. my favorite number. So I see. Yeah. It, it is, in fact, to do with the fact that it was a film. Okay, it's not just some sort of arbitrary number 23. <laughs> if I, I had to no, pick I, one, it would probably be 42 just because of the Douglas Adams thing, you know, the meaning <laughs> of life. But honestly, I don't have a favorite number. I didn't even know that was a thing, but uh, I'm, I'm glad you have one. <laughs> that's, that's good. Yeah. Apparently, there's a psychology thing. You could do this trick. There's, if you ask people to pick a number between 1 and 10, the majority of people will go for 7 for some reason. Oh. So if you want to pretend you're a mind reader, you might just want to kind of jot that down and say, pick a number and then impress them. Okay. Pull so out the so honestly, we fully are just going to talk about numbers. It was, it was <laughs> yeah. not an exaggeration. That's no, what this episode no. is all about. Forget WordPress. We just want to talk about numbers. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh should we we move on so we've got a bunch of stats haven't we and we're yeah. going to try and desperately make this interesting so we've got some general wordpress stats um i guess the first one everyone knows really that it's presently occupying 41.6 percent of the web as we record this probably be higher by the time it goes out that is a gigantic number and i'm sure you're right as we as you say by the time this goes out give it a day and it'll probably creep up by 0.1 percent when i joined I, wordpress the mm. community i don't know eight ten years ago whatever it was um it was in the mid-20s i think so it has really skyrocketed a lot in in recent times yeah and uh, but also well it hasn't skyrocketed either it's been a roughly that's uh, true two percent increase throughout its time which i find fascinating why it is that way but it's i remember matt mullenweg saying this maybe about five years ago because he was worried that it might decline before the whole gutenberg thing but no it's, it seems to have been fairly consistent with this two percent for different reasons i guess yeah so if we if we go forward 60 years into the future wordpress will have <laughs> over a hundred percent of the internet <laughs> yeah. if it continues its its normal trajectory that that'll be good if it has 105 percent of the internet at that point we know that the statistics are just broken <laughs> <laughs> yeah. how do they but even close... work this out though how, how is that number arrived at do you have any insight into uh, that? no not really and in fact the one that's always used is uh, w3text.com and that's the one that I know Matt Mullenweg always uses when he's look, talking about WordPress. So I don't know where it comes from, really. I don't okay. know how it's worked out. No. But the closest competitor is Shopify, which is really growing at 3.6%. So it's, that's when that's, you say it's growing it, in the last few years, it's gone from, I don't know, 2% right up to 3%. Because if you think about that, the, a percentage point move for them is a dramatic change in, in their proportion of the internet. You know, if they go from yeah. three percent to five percent, they've more than, you know, they've gone like up sixty percent. Whereas WordPress is two percent a year suddenly seems less less impressive, although it's not. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, over the last we would we did an episode where we was talking about Shopify, and at that point it was over doubling the number of people who were using Shopify in that kind of one year. So okay. the 2020, 2021, it's kind of yeah doubled. That is That's, that is amazing, and yet you know it's less than a tenth of what WordPress has got. But by those metrics, yeah. it's uh, it's still an impressive low. It, the nice thing for the Shopify users as well is that you know there's a revenue stream there, isn't there? If you're um, if you're a Shopify mm. owner, that site presumably is making you some money. Whereas in in most cases, I'm imagining WordPress sites are not directly making you money because you're probably not selling things, although. Obviously, Woo is a massive part of the ecosystem now. But yeah, okay, forty-two percent, mm. just about of the of the internet, massive, huge. Yeah, should we talk about the number of automaticians? Is that okay. correct? Yeah, automaticians that, meaning seen? people who work for automatic. That this number is impressive. It's big. Yeah, one thousand five hundred and four at the yeah. time of recording this. Again, over um, eighty-one countries speaking a hundred different languages. 
That must get very right. confusing if they're all talking at the same time. It must be <laughs> yeah. very hard to get anything done. But look at that, at 1,500. I'm sure that two years ago, so in 2019, uh, was the last time I yeah. came across that number. I'm sure it was 1,100. So by that estimate, it's rising about 100 a year. Um, yeah. And so these are people who are just employed by automatic, which is, yeah. if you like, the custodian of the dot-com side of things that's maybe not not the best way of describing it but anyway there we go it's a it's a lot of people but there's some there's some big holes on the map isn't there yeah there is there seems to be literally no one in china as far as i can see um or thailand or cambodia or lao so um and few in Russia. In fact, I can't quite work it out. There's an interactive map which you can go and see. If you go to automatic.com and go to the About Us, you can see where they are all positioned. And I think it even gives their names, does it? Oh, right. I'm not okay. sure. Yeah. But mm. um, so the majority are in Europe or North America yeah. with significant bits. I wonder if the the no one in China bit, I wonder if that's a I wonder if there's policy around that. I wonder if people are, are, are Possibly. able to be employed by automatic. I, I honestly don't know. Forgive my ignorance. Um, yeah, well, I think there's difficulties, isn't there, with the blocks on the internet to be able to work. in. The, so perhaps that's one of the, hmm. the difficulties. Yeah. Um, but Bangkok but it, was going to be the destination for WordCamp Asia. And and according to your little map, there's no um, there's nobody in Thailand, so that's intriguing. Uh, actually, I'm I'm completely wrong. Now I'm looking at the map here. See, I'm obviously misreporting this. We do have someone called Code Wrangler who's in Thailand, oh. and we have someone called Happiness Engineer who's in Vietnam. So there, you there go. is some markers there. They just don't have a face. Okay, okay. <laughs> But nevertheless, um, it's a lot of people, and it it speaks of a growing um, a growing company, automatic. Yeah, one thousand five hundred I mean, people. Probably, Crikey! Yeah, uh, but we also have to remember there's so many acquisitions that automatic have made as well, so they're not all going to be working on WordPress, I guess. So. Yeah, good point. Good point. Um, yeah. Next one is all about languages. This is is this statistic about the languages that the websites are in? So. It says here 75% are in English, followed by, this is a big drop, isn't it? The next one is 4.7%, which would be in Spanish. So the vast majority of websites that are built with WordPress end up being English. And I'm guessing, pr presumably, because, you know, multilingual plugins mm. are not the most best-selling on the planet. I'm guessing mm -hmm. that they are only in English, which is intriguing. Yeah, I, well, I thought it was interesting, given how much Spanish is spoken around the world, right. that it is quite a low uh, percent. And it's Indonesian next at 2.4. So that's really quite... So it, most people are trying to write in English, I guess, because of the web. It's it's just easier to to attract more attention, isn't it, to yeah. get more traffic? Yeah, you... I wonder if um, English use has gone up since the advent of the internet. It kind of feels like it, it has... It has well, wherever yeah. I go, English seems to be the the thing that the internet is written in. Obviously, that's not the case. But um, mm. I wonder if it has promoted the learning of English um, more mm. than before the internet came around. I mean, the thing about this statistic, which you were kind of querying where it might come from, I mean, this is supposed to be from WordPress.com, but I'm not quite sure they've got an activities page, which got some really interesting statistics on it. But I'm, I'm thinking they might have, joined together the wordpress.org statistics as well oh. with this. I, I don't know. It's just a, a bit of a guess because it seems a lot. So it says how many people are reading wordpress.com sites and it's over 409 million people uh, and who are viewing more than 20 billion pages each month. That seems like it must be including surely.org. Yeah, yes. Yeah. That is a lot. So many. That is a lot. But yeah. still... You know the the lion's share of it is uh, is in is in English, yeah. Um, then the next fact you've written down is the the salaries of somebody that works in the US as a WordPress developer. Oh, yeah. So the, this is a WordPress developer is expected to earn on average of fifty four thousand dollars per annum. So. Okay. It's slightly less, actually, if we follow that link through. It's a little bit less for designers 
So that's the developers. So it's uh, 46 for designers. And if you're a front-end developer stroke engineer, it goes up to uh, 59K. So okay. there we are. So the, the, more, mm. the more technical you become, the, the more likely you are to command a higher salary. I wonder how that compares to, to other things. I don't know, for example, if you are a Laravel developer or you're an expert in React or something like that. I'm imagining that, that WordPress is not um, particularly well paid uh, in terms of the technology landscape. I'm sure that there are skills out there which could receive considerably higher remuneration because they're, well, perhaps they're, they're less to do with websites, more to do with, I don't know, SaaS apps and um, all that kind of fun stuff. Yeah, it's a very good point. And actually, I mean, surely this is going to be changing quite a lot uh, over time because the skills now to work with WordPress uh, are much greater. It's not just PHP any longer, is it? We're learning things like React. So, Are, mm. we, are we learning things like React? <laughs> Some, <laughs> well, I'm sure somebody is, but uh, it's not me at the minute. <laughs> <laughs> or me either no yeah um yeah so i'm sure that's going to check that that is quite difficult all of these statistics are quite difficult aren't they they need some interpretation so yeah there are probably some people who are earning really top money because they really know this react stuff and uh some of the regular php people might be struggling i don't know well i guess i guess that's a fair caveat for everything that we say today is that we're just scraping <laughs> statistics from the internet and presenting them as actual gospel truth where Whereas uh, we have no idea, but it's fun. It's fun regardless. Next one. This is a surprise. I thought the plugin, the number of plugins would be about this point, but I'm, I'm surprised that the number of themes is as low as it is. So at, at, at the time of this, I think we can be sure of, because this is probably an actual number. At the time of recording this, 58,674, 75, 76, it's probably going up like that, <laughs> plugins are available on the repo and... 8,404 themes, so nearly 60,000 plugins and roughly 8,500 themes, which uh, which is, I just, for some reason, I thought there would be a more parity there. I thought theme number would be higher than that, but uh, still a lot. Yeah, I guess I, um, it's in line with what I would expect, actually, thinking about it. We'll talk a little bit more about these yeah. and the actual plugins at the top yeah. and the themes, but yeah. Yeah, so it's more in line with my expectations, I guess, mm. um, because so many there's so many tiny little plugins that do just one very very simple thing, um, and various different versions of the same thing. Yeah, yeah, good point. Yeah. Um, yeah, and there really is a plugin for everything. And I wonder how many of those plugins are just sort of sitting there quietly, you know, being consumed by four or five people, maybe ten people or fifty people. You've obviously got the giants that we've all heard of that are installed millions of times, but I would imagine most of those 58,000 are, you know, a few here and a few there because they do something specific yeah. to what only a few people are going to need. But, yeah, there really is a plugin for almost everything. I'm always amazed when I come across something that I want to achieve and I go and see, has somebody built this already? And the vast majority of times the answer is a resounding yes. Not only that, but there's eight to choose from. <laughs> Yeah, it's the tiny little plugins that make such a difference to me. So something like um, zero spam for Gravity Falls right, or something. Right. Really simple little script that it adds, and it's just been invaluable to me. Mm. Um, I love those little plugins, yeah. I think the plugins uh, architecture of WordPress is probably the single thing that allowed it to grow in the way that it did because it could, it could suddenly do things that you didn't have to create. It could suddenly yeah. do things that somebody else had built for you and you, you either just downloaded it for free or you paid somebody for the premium version. Speaking of which, presumably that 58,674 doesn't include all of the things which have got no place on the repository. There must be you know, tens exactly. of thousands so of premium ones, yeah. Yeah, Code Canyon must have thousands, yeah. mustn't yeah. they, of plugins that aren't there. So yeah, let's just call it a hundred thousand and be done. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I've it decided. must. I, you know, I really think it must be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about the WordCamps because we weren't sure about this. We had a look at central.wordcamp.org and about, and there was a little chart there which tells us, and we believe now this must be the total sum of WordCamps that have been, which is one thousand and eighty-three across 65 countries. 
Yeah. When when I read that, I thought that that was there are one thousand and eighty three different word camps that you could attend in sixty five <laughs> yeah. countries, and then that just I was like, whoa, whoa. But that that really can't be true. So we've got several in the UK. You know, we've got the notable ones. I won't mention any names, but you you'll all know. There's there's a whole bunch here. I'm sure the same could be said in the United States and presumably places like France and what have you. And and it all adds up to 1,083, which is is a lot. So every time a word camp happens, that number goes up by one, uh, no matter where you are in the world. But 65 countries, man alive, that's a lot. Yeah, yeah, indeed. And it still must be growing. I mean, I I attended the first one that was in a part of India, you know. So then there was, uh, I think, many of the ones that are in, in India that only been around for a couple of years. So they're still quite new there. So there's you know growth isn't there in that yep and um yeah i guess that number that particular number can only keep going up it's impossible for it to go down but i'm still (laughs) still surprised that it's got to a thousand um and all of this the official word camps bear in mind that there'll be a whole load of much more informal meetups that happen just for one evening each month say for example so we have um a word word um, camp meetup in Leeds that's the closest one to me that happens and that's not included in the statistic uh, to be included in this statistic you go through you go through automatic and it's all official and they will help you with things like um, you know they'll provide finance and uh, provide assistance so that you can actually get it up and running and do the tickets and organize mm-hmm. the menus and organize the venue and all of that kind of stuff so there's a lot of work over the years gone into those 1083 word camps really a lot of work mm. Mm. yeah okay well the next statistic i guess this won't be that much of a surprise but it comes from kingster.com so i'm not sure how up to date this is but less than one third of all wordpress installations are up to date that is really Completely. surprising isn't it and because it prompted yeah. both of us to go and <laughs> neither of us knew well we weren't certain that you could you could force WordPress. We knew that you could force WordPress to update all the plugins. There's that option has been mm-hmm. around for a few months now, but neither of us were aware that you could actually force it to go through major updates as well. And you can, if you go mm. if you go to the dashboard and click the updates link, there's a sentence right at the top, and I can't remember what it says. I think I've got it on the screen here. No, I haven't. But there's a sentence uh, which you you click on a link and it enables it and it changes the wording of the sentence. So I was kind of expecting to find a tick box or a toggle or something like that, but there isn't. You literally click on a sentence and it mm-hmm. changes the sentence so that you would, if you clicked on it again, it would it would turn it on and off. And but it's it's not the clearest way of doing it. But you can. No. So it's- there's no excuse for this, is there? But I'm not going to switch it on. I don't. I don't want my. I don't want it to roll onto version six automatically. I want to be there when that happens. I have a lot of test sites, so I'm tempted to do it on that. And um, what it says is, <clears throat> excuse me, enable automatic updates for all new versions of WordPress. And if you connect, if you say yes to that or click on the link, then it actually changes to switch to automatic updates for maintenance and security releases only. So that's kind of your two options but it's not that clear is it you'd i would imagine that that would say something like um (laughs) enable automatic updates and there to be a tick box but you have to read the sentence pass the sentence and then click it and realize okay now the sentence says the exact opposite so if i click it again it's going to go off anyway that's completely by the (laughs) by the by the fact is according to this statistic one third um are only on the latest version and yeah 90 percent it goes on 90 percent of cleanup requests from Securi, who <clears throat> are a, um, a service that you can pay to clean up your wordpress website amongst other things 90 percent of their cleanup work comes from wordpress and that that's the yeah. that's the thing i always hear that that basically yeah. the, the the vector for uh, getting uh, for attacking WordPress is is on updated plugins or themes usually. Yeah, yeah, that's what it's got to. Do. And you know, it's interesting, isn't it? Whether it should be, whether it should be installed with this automatically turned on, so updates will happen immediately. Yeah, so, I kind of feel that if we if that statistic's true, and one third of the websites mm. using WordPress are not on the latest update. 
I kind of feeling that that <clears throat> excuse me, we've both got frogs in our throats today, haven't we? Mm -hmm. I feel that statistic is is a bit low. You know, it ought to be higher. That is to say, m less people would need to update. So mm. having that on by default, mm, don't really know. I, I think for me, no. But I think for people mm. who really never use their WordPress install, they never log into the back end and aren't really aware that this is a thing, maybe maybe it should be turned on by default so that we have less Ooh. vulnerabilities out there in the wild, you know, compromising been... servers and taking websites and other people's websites down. <laughs> We've been talking about WordPress for five years. You do a, a weekly a news roundup and how long have I been since 2007 I've been using WordPress and we both had to go and look up whether there was this option yeah. to yeah. automatically update so yeah. maybe maybe there's an argument yeah yeah it, needs, it kind of feels like it ought to be a an install part of the install wizard you know when you're yeah. installing WordPress for the first time do you want us to keep the software up to date you feel like yeah, you get that yeah. on all sorts of other things. You know, Mac apps, for example, there's always a button to, do you want us to just automatically update in the background? That um, yeah. that feels good. And it does tell you, you know, when you get a point release, so let's say we go to six, it does, you do get the email. Um, so you do know that things like this have happened. But anyway, yeah. the point is there's a lot of WordPress websites that need to be updated Tot, tot, go and update yeah. them right away, David. <laughs> I think some of them, there was a little bit of a holdback, I, I believe. I don't know when this statistic was uh, made, but there was a holdback going into version 5 because of the Gutenberg change. So a lot of people didn't update because they weren't sure what that was going to mean for right. them. Right. So there okay. may, be, may be legitimate reasons for some holding back. Mm. Mm. And now we're on to SEO-related stuff because apparently... Oh, yeah. Apparently... Um, Apparently, WordPress is pretty good on the old Google side of things by <laughs> default. Yeah, this is another one I've stopped, I think, from the Kinstar article as well. So according to Matt Cutts, uh, this is already dating it from the Google web spam team because he's no longer there. Um, 80 to 90 percent of Google's crawling issues are solved by uh, WordPress takes care of that by default. So it's good for SEO. I do remember yeah. when I came to WordPress, that was one of the things which people kept saying all the time is that the default version of WordPress was good for Google. You know, Google could scrape all sorts of useful information out of a normal WordPress website. I guess I guess all of that's in flux because now there are so many different components which make up Google's crawling of the internet and the data that they put together on your mm. website is so complicated and there's so many moving parts. I don't know if that's still true. I don't know if a default install of WordPress is as good as anything else or is even half decent or if plugins that do the SEO side of things are a total requirement. Don't know. But mm. um, certainly I've got this lasting legacy in my head that WordPress is good for SEO. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. But... Yeah, I don't know what I don't know what actually makes it good because almost everybody needs an an SEO plugin so they can well, adapt that's it, there. right? That's it. And yeah. I, but I'm I'm guessing that that's to that's to get the extra the extra little boost that you need if you want to be at number one. But I would have thought for most people who just want to have a website, and we forget often, don't we, that a significant proportion of people are creating WordPress websites just to get their thoughts out there. You know, it's a blog. It's not trying yeah. to be discovered by tens of thousands of people through Google. It's just a repository for people's thoughts and they share it with the people that they know and so on. But um, yeah, I guess for the, the top end, getting to the getting to the top of the search rankings, you do need all the extra juice. And there's no way you could put all that into core because it's too complicated. Yeah, and I think when I adopted WordPress, I think there were other CMSs out there that didn't even allow you to have the pretty URLs, so they were made up of numbers. You know, it was right uh, as it is by default right. on, on WordPress, unless you actually kind of tick on that you want, yeah, yeah, meaningful titles. So yes, yeah. So I think its reputation goes back from those days. You know, it was one of the few there where you know what in your url was actual real words yeah the permalinks could be set to be the actual title of the blog post separated with hyphens yeah, yeah and it was totally Indeed. readable yeah good point maybe that's mm. maybe that's where it goes back to just something as simple as that but it it certainly um it has this aura of being good for seo but obviously there's a thriving marketplace for seo plugins so it's obviously there's room for improvement right next yeah. stop oh themes okay wow look at this well, most popular actually, 
Yeah, well, I probably shouldn't have put this in the general WordPress stuff. So it's um, the most popular or the most purchased uh, WordPress theme that's on Theme Forest, and that's all just premium stuff, it is Avada. And Avada costs 90 no, th- sorry, <laughs> $59, and it sold over 200,000 copies, meaning that it's generated over 12 million in sales and counting. Good grief. I've never used <clears throat> this this theme. I don't go to Theme Forest anymore. You know, I have this I have this impression these days that we've still got the the metaphor over there of bloat and you know one theme to do yeah. everything, which is not what I'm about now. But that is popular. Man alive, sixty dollars, fifty nine dollars, two hundred thousand copies. So that's yeah, like you say, twelve million dollars. Is that still going? Is is Theme Forest still a thing? Does it thrive as far as you know i think I, th- I think it does um i mean it it was always leading wasn't it I, it's almost like we lived in two worlds and i think we probably move on to talk about this in the themes and what's on what's the most popular ones on wp.org and then you know against what's popular out there generally and i think you know you, that's when you start to see the theme forest the big mega themes start to appear i don't think they're as popular as they used to be so mm. i think the likes of with having <clears throat> Elementor and having Astro, we, we're getting these kind of page builder, WordPress page builder themes, which are, are starting to dominate and I think are stealing a little bit from Theme Forest. But, you know, Avada and those other ones, Enfold and these really big popular ones are still, Flatsum's one that I keep getting, uh, keeps getting talked about all of the time, not in our circles so much, but just generally as a, as a WooCommerce solution, mm-hmm. um, it just the, doesn't feature. Uh, the, the thing that when I first came to WordPress, I did try out a few theme forest themes, but it, it quickly became obvious to me that the the I was being missold. In other words, um, it it purported to make my life easy, and actually, I just spent the whole time trying to undo the things that I didn't want, and <laughs> yeah. the things that were supposed to be easy. I don't know things like portfolios. After a little bit of poking around, you realise, well, you know what? That's actually fairly easy to do on my own elsewhere, and yeah. and so and so it goes. And so I lost interest. The the idea of one theme to rule them all that can do everything, you quickly realised that's not what I want. I don't want that. I want one theme that's hardly got anything in, and I'll build on top of rather than trying to pull all the the stuff out that I don't need. And I'm sure the same would be true for many people listening to this. Yeah, it feels a little bit like um, with trading places with some of the success that Theme Forest had initially with WordPress. I mean, it was doing so well compared to stuff that was on the repository, all those kind of separate, simple like Genesis framework, things like that that became very popular. But now it almost feels like things like Astra are able to bring along the kind of stuff that you would get in those theme forest mega themes now themselves so they're kind of in the repository now i I think it's interesting how things have changed but again with the stats if we have a look at the themes which have the most installs according to wordpress.org then well it's interesting the tab if you go on most popular i'm not quite sure how it's measured Uh, with the plugins it's pretty simple it's down to installs but it obviously isn't the case because they put number one as the 2021 theme yeah. which is under a million where the 2020 theme is over a million and astra is over a million have you so, ever used these the default wordpress themes on a site <laughs> where which you actually launched and said that's it that's your website no not me but uh, I did have a friend who used, I think it was the 2017 theme Mm -hmm. um, for her blog. And, uh, you know, it was the first time really that I'd seen anyone go with the default. Um, Mm -hmm. (laughs) I was going to do her helper with some work on it. So that's the closest I've ever got someone who's and they they were really stuck with it. It was going to be quite difficult for them to change their theme. But, uh, yeah, I guess a lot of people start with that. Um, she was doing very well as well with it. I, th- I guess it's it's a point of reference, isn't it? You know, in many cases, they're trying to demonstrate how a certain thing that's new can be implemented. Mm. 
So you feel like mm. with 2021, there might be aspects mm. of blocks or block patterns, that kind of thing, you know, and it's just demonstrating, that, well, this is how you could do that. Not necessarily, well, here's, use this. This is the best thing possible because we all know that. But it's amazing in that top 10 list from WordPress.org. You're right, the order's all co like <laughs> messed up, isn't it? Because we've got ones with bigger numbers uh, uh, in the wrong place, according to those numbers. But I'm just going to go through the whole list, if that's all right, all 10. Mm. See if this rings true to you. 2021 is number one. Oh, I'm going to sound like smashy and nicey. Uh, anybody, uh, I'm going to go in reverse order, and although I've released number one already. So in 10th place, we have Cadence. Number nine is Neve. Eight is Popular FX. What? Um, number seven, Ocean <laughs> WP. Number six, 2019. Number five, 2017. Number four, fresh in, it's Hello Elemental. <laughs> number three, <laughs> the ever popular, yeah, that's it, the ever popular Astra. Number two, 2020. And in number one for the fifth <laughs> week running, it's 2021. <laughs> Uh, there you go. Sorry, I apologise. I uh, really needed some music with that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's the one. Um, but, well, yes, but interestingly, if we take built with trends and they've only really, as far as I can see, it might be me not being able to handle my way around uh, built with, but we can only see the top million. And it's really different, of course, to some things that are not on the repository, like Divi. That's the number one there in the top million. Right. And then there's Popper, which I had to look up. I didn't even know what it was. This is Morton... a Morton Rand Hendrickson one, and I only know that because it's written on the page in front of me. But I'd, <laughs> I'd, I'd confess I'd not come across, or at least I don't think I've come across that one before. I know it's such a simple theme with a concentration on simplicity yep. and accessibility yep. and yep. those kind of stuff. So I didn't know he had a theme so popular, but still there. Uh, number two, and then it's Astra, then it's Avada, then it's the Genesis framework, which I know used to share top place with Divi. So it's obviously on the full mm. generate press. And then we start to move into 2020, 2017, 2021, um, following that. So it's... Uh, just suddenly seeing Divi there, which is really a page builder in a theme, isn't it? Yeah. It just kind of throws um, all the numbers out. So yeah. I just thought that was interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. So the built with trends are really different from the what we're getting on WordPress.org. I mean, there's some overlap, but there's also some completely complete disagreements. And uh, I don't know. It feels to me almost as if the built with one feels more like my experience in the world. Uh, yes. you know, because I know that Divi is incredibly popular. I know that Astra is really popular. But yet again, you know, there are some creeping in there that I just like the popper one. I, I don't know that I've seen that in the wild, but I've definitely seen Divi no. in the wild and Astra in the wild and Generate Press in the wild and so on. So I don't really know. It's peculiar. I guess we've just got to be a bit mindful that these whatever built with is using to scrape the internet and figure this out is bound to be fraught with error. But. <laughs> The, yes. the bottom line is there are some plugins and there are some themes in this case which we've heard of and they are really, really popular. And I guess if you make any of those lists and you are behind that theme, you're probably doing very well. Yeah. Should we have a quick look at the um, the plugins yeah. and how they... Uh, I could give you the music if you like. If oh, you want to am go I going to do that reverse... again? No, I don't think anybody's ready no. for that. No, no, no. <laughs> so plugins with the most installs. I'll go from the top. So we've got Contact Form 7. I, that always surprises me every mm. time mm. why that is so big. Heck, shall I... I want to put this in perspective, actually, because what we've got is a problem with what we read on .org because it stops at 5 million right. plus yeah, and this, doesn't record yeah. beyond that. Mm. So so we have to get our statistics from elsewhere. So we can roughly guess this. So if we, what we've been told by Elementor is that they, according to their figures, they are over, say, 7 million installations. And that seems to link in with what... Um, Actually, W3 Techs are talking about them being the fastest growing uh, builder outside of WordPress itself, and also numbers with built in. So, we, I think we're, Element is probably right that the 4.5% of the web, over 7 million, the classic editor should be higher than that, as in place number three on the list. Okay. So, and then the next one is Yoast in number two, which is uh, Yoast SEO. And they estimate that they've got 11 million. So we'll have to guess 
that classic editor is somewhere between 7 and 11 million. I wonder why we don't have anything beyond 5 million. Now that we're into the terrain where, well, mm. Yost are claiming 11 million, that mm-hmm. strikes me that, well, at that point, then we, we if somebody thinks that they're on 10 plus million, we ought to have a, a 10 to 15 bracket as well. Um, yeah, it's just it's just interesting to know. I mean, it's not required. Yeah, anything above five million is jolly big, but um, but still, it would be nice to have some sort of more accurate measuring on this. But you're right, though. The so. contact form seven on that really is puzzling to me. But it's free, right? And it does what it needs to do. Yeah, I guess so. It's been around a long time as well. Yeah. But also, I checked out the built with statistics on that, and again, it's the top million. But it it says it's eleven percent. Um, wow. installation for that so it's kind of you know it's backed up it is more probably than the 11 million of yoast seo yeah. you know if it's 11 cents so but, but if you literally need a contact form where mm-hmm. somebody puts in an email address and a message and wants to hit a button that's you don't need anything else and i would imagine for yeah. most people that's all they want right they just want a way to to be contacted so it doesn't need all the gravity forms, fluent forms, WP forms, yeah. whiz bang stuff. It just needs to to do a simple thing. I know, but it's it's just interesting. I don't. I mean, I don't want to put it down, but it's uh, it's had its fair share of security issues. So mm. you you know it's um, it, and it's very limited as well. So there's a lot of add-ons for it. So yeah. it, it's surprising that people go for that as a default and mm. I, I don't think it's necessarily the best for accessibility either so yeah okay <clears throat> but yeah it's got 11 percent according to built in and then gravity forms which we can't see obviously on the wordpress.org has got somewhere depends um how you're measuring it somewhere between um 2.5 to 3 percent yeah of the share so interesting shall I, shall I just go through the list one to ten mm. quickly so this is not in reverse order. This is number one is contact form seven. I won't do the numbers. Number two, Yoast SEO. Number three, the classic editor. We'll come back to that. Number four, mm. Elementor. Um, number five, Akismet. Number six, mm. WooCommerce. Number seven, Jetpack. Number eight, really simple SSL. Wow, it's still in there. Number nine, WP Forms. And number 10, WordFence. Hmm. Mm. It is surprising, particularly really simple SSL. It's, it's, is it required any longer, that as a plugin? No, you would have thought that. I think, wasn't that a transition plugin to make it so mm. that a site that you had previously built and you didn't want to mm. go into the database and update anything, you, you could install this and it would just take care of, I don't know how it did it, to mm. be honest. Maybe it was re- rewriting something, HD Access or something, I don't know. But it would it would ensure that all pages visited were on SSL. But clearly that moment has passed and any new site is by default going to be on SSL, one would hope, uh, from now on. Mm. So you feel that one's had its moment and it's going to sort of drop off the list. But there's some surprising stuff in there. I'm surprised that Akismet's in there. Um, Yeah, me too. I'm not surprised that WooCommerce is in there. I'm surprised that Jetpack managed to get into the top 10 because, you know, there's just Mm. there's a lot of people who have a real issue with Jetpack. I'm not surprised about WP Forms because they have an, a, a free offering which does more than Contact mm. Form 7. I mean, it's not anywhere near as capable as the premium version, but it's still, it will do your basic Contact Form and it will do it beautifully. And WordFence, um, yeah, that, that one kind of doesn't yeah. surprise me. But the, the big one to, to discuss anyway is is the classic editor at number three. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah, you approve, say, I think, don't. though. You you like that being at number three. I'm um, <laughs> I, I, we we live on different camps in this one, don't we? We have to stare at each other from across the river. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, the Gutenberg plugin itself has got uh, three hundred thousand active downloads. So that's the number of people who are uh, keen to find out what's going on with Gutenberg ahead of the time, I yeah. guess, or just people are confused. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, could be that, but I'm I'm uh, I, but, I'm guessing that over time that classic editor one, especially as it's the support for it, isn't it? Is it next year the support for it's going to be uh, taken away? You know, it'll just either be maintained by the community or or it will fade into into posterity. But it's certainly at the mm. minute there's a lot of people choosing 
to enable the classic editor in that way. You do it differently, don't you? Which you've got a disable Gutenberg plugin. Is that disable right? Gutenberg? Yeah, because because the if I'm not using Gutenberg at all, uh, it's starting to get a little bit bloated as they start adding features. So there's the blocks CSS file, which is getting bigger. If I'm not using it, I don't want that output into all pages. So disable Gutenberg will do that for me. So I've swapped it out and removed the classic editor now. So there is no editor at all. It's all page builder from top to bottom. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So I'm, yeah, there's a lot of sites like that where I'm just, you know, it's, Gutenberg's not going to be used. You know, my personal sites are used, you know, I leave Gutenberg on. I don't bother with it if it's going to be useful. But if I'm not going to output any content using Gutenberg, might as well clear up the bloat. Right. Yeah, makes sense. Um, yeah. So that's the plugins. Bye, we've done a lot of statistics. I think... Is that it? Have we got any more? No, we've got the quirky, weird things to do still. <laughs> we'll just have to selectively go through some of these then, yeah. shall we? Um, the, the one that's in, there's some really interesting facts. If you go to w3techs.com forward slash blog, they have web technology fact of the day. And there's some great stuff here. I mean, it obviously goes out of date fairly quickly. But one that I love, but I can't make out, is that... Um, <laughs> that WordPress has 82.4% of the CMS market share amongst websites in Japan or Japanese in Japanese, whereas only 43.9% of the market share among sites in German. So now that's the language actually, isn't right. it? So yeah. So the people speaking Japanese love word, but like really, really love using WordPress, <laughs> yeah. whereas about half as many people speaking or writing their things in German love WordPress. So that's is it fascinating, isn't it? I wonder why. I don't know. Is it Germans don't like WordPress as much as the Japanese do? Or, or is, is there just a the language? Yeah, I was just I was wondering if the maybe the translation into Japanese is just is really good or, you know, there's just a, a vibrant community there. I don't know. But it being double is quite amazing. You would have thought it would have been more evened out with a few percentage variations here and there, but 88 nearly 83 well 82 percent um of the cms market share for for the japanese speaking world yeah. that's fascinating that's so unusual and then it's a japan it's a japanese guy isn't it who made the um contact, contact seven, 7 plugin yes yeah yeah, yeah. there you go that's, that's maybe what's driven the entire thing we now know yeah. what it is. It's Contact Form 7 and uh, and his amazing contributions. Right, okay, that's a weird one. What's next? November 25th, 2020, WooCommerce is used by more sites than Shopify, Magento, OpenCart, and PrestaShop combined. So a little over six months ago, WooCommerce had is dominating the, the mm. e-commerce space. This is a thing that I just hear all the time. And the acquisitions that we've had in the WordPress space recently, a lot of them are related to WooCommerce. Matt Mullenweg is really bullish that we are only just beginning to tap into the potential of, of WooCommerce. So mm. it doesn't surprise me. I mean, it is a it is a brilliant thing. And I know that there are bits of it that we wish were different and we wish that certain UI elements were more prominent or that there were different combinations of a checkout experience and so on. But it is, you can customize it with a with either some custom code or you can buy a plugin to fix just about anything that you want to fix. But the fact that it yeah. it's more than all the others combined is pretty amazing. Yeah, I think it might lose that now because of the growth of Shopify. Good point. Um, it's, it's, I think it's uh, presently, this is from memory because I looked it up. I haven't written this down, but I think it's 28% of the, the market share for WooCommerce. And you there, said but... that, what was it? 3.4 for Shopify. No, that was 3.4% of the CMS space. So for, yes, so for exactly in the shopping carts, the... it must be a quite a bit higher than that. I think it's around 12 to 13%. Ooh, so, so it's, it's growing quickly. Run. So, okay. So that yeah, tells us that the, the other three, the Magento, the open cart and the Presto shop, they're, they're pretty small. Yeah, okay. open carts definitely die in, isn't it, over time oh, now? It's closed so, yeah. cart now. Oh, dear. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, okay, some other facts. Um, I'll throw this one in because it's me having a little bit of a dig at Gutenberg, really. Um, <laughs> so on GitHub, you can see that Gutenberg has over 3,000 issues that are still to be resolved at the moment, but it has closed 
12,000 of those issues since it started. So, But I, I just think it's always interesting that because that's an awful lot of issues for everyone to bear in mind. I mean, some of those are going to be requests. We're sort of fast running out of time, so let's pick some of the the better, quirkier ones. What have you got here? I'm just, you'll notice I'm just sort of sidestepping the Gutenberg problems. I'm just, no, 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 fine. Um, Squarespace, as of earlier this year, January 2021, Squarespace is now the fourth most popular content management system overtaking Drupal and Wix. This is a sad day for me. I, I have great respect for Drupal. I have no interaction with Wix to speak of, so I can't mention that, but Squarespace taking over the the mighty Drupal, but that tells us that we we haven't done th- second place there, because if we've got Squarespace in fourth, WordPress in yeah. first, what's second and third? Uh, we had I've lost my tabs, but Joomla was ah, in there, wasn't it? Of course, it? yes, yeah, that yes. was the the next one. Yeah, yeah. This led us to a conversation well before we pressed record, which was all about the the CMSs that came and went, and I seem to remember <laughs> that. Oh goodness me! Things that I've tried. What did I try? It's not really a CMS, but Code Igniter. I remember using that one, and then can kind of related to that. What was the what was the product from the the same people that did Code Igniter? Oh, it was a CMS and you could pay for it. You had to pay... M- movable type? It wasn't movable type, but movable type is okay. another one which was really popular at the time. Um, and it has gone. Maybe somebody in the comments can let me know what it was. But I tried using that one as well. And you had to pay a license. And that was that was enough for me. I wanted it all open source. And so I moved over to, to WordPress. But anyway, there you go. Right, what else have we got? Top widget. This is a weird one. Top widgets. I don't really even get what's going on here. Top widgets. Google <laughs> fonts, 8%. Google tag manager. I can kind of get that one. 6%. Font awesome, 5%. WP, 5% yeah. plugins. I don't really get what's going on. What is this one about? Oh, it's it's from Trends with built with, and it's looking at their widgets. I think we we have to be a little bit wary with anything we're built with because it's what they managed to pick up from sites. So it may not be entirely accurate. I just found it an interesting thing on there. What they saw, I thought Google Fonts in the top million, only eight percent were using Google Fonts. Seemed very low to me. Yeah. Yeah, that is that is because I mean you see them everywhere, don't you? It is kind of the default. Yeah. I feel that that might not be the case going forwards. It feels like with Core Web Vitals, a lot of people are eschewing that and deciding to drop drop that and having yeah. having local font files instead. Yeah, absolutely. We were going back before the days of Google mm. Font <laughs> yeah, to, to using system fonts. Yeah, mm. it's interesting, isn't it? We've had a drive for features and customization and things looking different and now we're having a drive for pulling everything right back and pairing it all back and speed becoming the the most important thing i guess if we wait five years another bus will come along and we'll all have to jump on that but we don't know what that is yet okay another one apparently on may the 4th 2021 i don't know if that was the date when this happened but for the first time since we the surveying was started in 20 well 2009 the Nginx has become the most popular web server, um, taking the, the helm from Apache. That feels yeah. like exactly what's been happening in, in my world, at least anyway. I definitely was using Apache and then Nginx. I'm, I'm still not, because I don't really move with servers anymore and I don't follow any of that kind of stuff, I'm, I'm not 100% sure exactly what the benefits are and how it performs the the um the speed that it does but certainly that seems mm. to be the way everybody's going you know i put nginx on any server that i create nowadays yeah and i think maybe just one last one though mm-hmm. which i think is just interesting uh, Jan- this is the uh, 8th of january this year that http2 is now used by 50 percent of all websites um going up from 42 percent uh of the year ago so yeah that's growing a lot i thought it would be actually quite higher than that i find it i look up quite a lot of other people's sites actually to see whether they they are uh, http2 and i never find any that aren't yeah it just seems to be the default nowadays it's such a nice piece of technology as well you know the fact that it the, all the different the things that it can do better 
really do mm. make the internet a faster, better place to to inhabit. Yeah, so that's good. Do you want to do the the hosting things? Because the hosting one just looks really quirky. Should we should we just do them in no particular order? The popular okay. trends with um, built with dot com forward slash hosting. These are the ones that come up. And there's a lovely one in here. This is great. Uh, this is this is a real <laughs> insight into how their scraping works. So, in amongst the top ten, I'll do I'll do nine and and then I'll do the uh, the final one. We've got Cloudflare hosting. Okay, I, I I never use Cloudflare hosting. Amazon. I'm guessing that that's probably right near the top. Google and Google Cloud. I don't quite know how they're different. I didn't know you could host on just Google. Um, Microsoft and all of their different pieces of software. Confluence Networks, DigitalOcean, mm-hmm. OVH, yeah, yeah. GoDaddy, Hetzner. Okay. Um, and Microsoft in again with Azure. So they've got two positions like Google. But this is my favorite one. I believe this is the future. This is the hosting company that we should all buy shares in. Domain not resolving. <laughs> That's lovely. Uh, I love it. Yes. That's uh, that's hysterical, though, because it tells us that, you know, in the top 10, there are so many sites that are just not doing anything. They're just sitting there consuming the, the world's resources. Um, you know, you go and try to buy a domain name and some somebody's already bought it. And, you know, it represented getting into the top 10. <laughs> that's hysterical. Yeah. Who's going to buy the domain name first? Domain not <laughs> domain not resolving hosting. I'm, I'm going there right now. I'm going there. I'm going to buy it. Yeah, that's brilliant, isn't it? And you can immediately get into the top ten. Yeah, <laughs> that's so good. <laughs> right, I think we're done. What are we doing next time? Next time it's O. So I think we're going to do O for open source. Okay. We haven't done anything on GPL. I think no. Yeah, can we talk, talk about, about that? You know, actual source like S A U C E. Can we do? Like, you know, ketchup and brown <laughs> yeah, sauce that'd be and gravy and well, things like that. I think it's right, although we're running ahead, our scheduling is going wrong, but you've been asking the question about acquisitions, and I think that's part of this discussion on open source, don't you think? Okay, yeah, I think so. Let's put let's mm. crowbar that in for next time. So, mm. um, okay, that was lovely. That was really, really interesting. <laughs> Very nerdy. We've got to talk about yeah. numbers, but uh, thanks for doing all the hard research for that. That was brilliant. And uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Yeah, bye-bye. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode. Who knew there were so many numbers in the WordPress space about so many different things? I genuinely learned a lot with David researching this episode and putting it all together. So many figures and so many of them so large. Just WordPress is giant and all of the different things that are attached to it. Plugins, themes, hosting and all of that. It's just amazing the size of a lot of these numbers. If you enjoyed the episode, please find a way of letting us know about it. Go to wpbuilds.com, search for episode number 236, or go to our Mastodon instance, wpbuilds.social, and make a comment over there. You can start your own brand new thread all about it, but we'd love to hear your thoughts all about that. The WP Builds podcast was brought to you today by AB Split Test. Do you want to set up your A-B split tests in record time? The new A-B split test plugin for WordPress will have you up and running in a couple of minutes. Use your existing pages and test anything against anything else. Buttons, images, headers, rows, anything. And the best part is it works with Beaver Builder, Elementor and the WordPress block editor. Go and check it out at absplittest.com. Okay, that's more or less all that we've got for you this week. Not quite, though. Just for me to say now, we'll be back next week. And because this was a discussion episode with David Wormsley, next week it'll be an interview. Don't forget also to join us every Monday, 2pm UK time at wpbuilds.com forward slash live for our This Week in WordPress show. I'll be joined, as always, by Paul Lacey and some notable WordPress guests, and we chat through the weekly WordPress news, and then we push that out the following day as a blog piece and an audio episode. So, lots going on. I hope to catch you at some point this week. If I don't, we'll see you soon. Stay safe. I'm going to fade in some cheesy music and say bye-bye for now. <laughs>